This video, overpopulation, how real is it? What countries does it affect or does not affect? Who has an agenda? This is part two of the video dealing with replacement values. Hunger and starvation are real. Drought is real. Unsanitary living conditions leading to polluted drinkable water is real. Deforestation is real. Disease is real. Malnutrition is real. Death due to the above mentioned conditions is real. Statisticians and demographers can use facts from one area of the world and paint a bleak and gloomy picture for the gullible and the emotionally influenced. For example, this recent precipitation graph depicts drought and tropical forested regions of the world. Yet if one was to focus on North America, one would think that the western United States, as Idaho, Utah, Nevada, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, were all at the point of drought and disaster if not already in one. Here are two other graphs, locally produced, indicating the actual rainfall for the first part of June in the years of 2005 and 2010. The job description of demographers and statisticians varies greatly. The discrepancy is with all data sets, whether it be how many people use Tide or how many people have cats and dogs. In the video part one of the world population, we briefly touched upon the concept of replacement value. In this video, part two, we will try to paint a clearer picture of replacement value. Replacement value is the set of numbers or values for a couple or a childbearing female to have two offspring and a little bit more, depending on the mortality rate of the country or the region in which they reside. It can vary greatly from 2.6 down to 2.2. The value for equation purposes is set at 2.2 children per couple, since not all children will live to adulthood. This replacement value must be maintained for a country to have tabletop level or a no growth increase. Because of the many varieties of death, the amount of women who can conceive and the children who will maturate into adulthood the country's population will not increase in spite of the so-called prolonged lifespan attributed to the marvels of medical advancements. There are also on the other side of the equation more and more ways for people to overindulge and shorten their lives thereby negating the medical advancements. Mathematically a decision or natural occurrences will happen which will decrease a country's population, which will make the 2.6 to 2.2 replenishment rate still reside in the no growth zone. The world's three countries with the highest birth rate are Niger, Mali, and Uganda. The main reason there is human suffering in these countries when a disaster strikes is not because they do not get ample rainfall or live in fertile land, it is because of infrastructure. Here is a comparison to a crowded city in the United States, New York City. I believe one will find the statistics surprising. The total population of Niger, Mali, and Uganda combined is 57 million people of a worldwide population of 6.8 billion. The United States has 465 million people and the city of New York has a little over 8.3 million in a 305 square mile area. I shall play a statistical manipulation game for a moment to stimulate the truth concerning overpopulation. Uganda has an area of 146,000 square miles with a population of 26 million people. That is three times the population of New York City's 8.3 million with 478 times the land mass of New York's 305 square miles. A comparative equalization between Uganda and New York City would leave New York with only 17,300 people in the same 305 square miles. 
This would mean an extreme reduction of metropolis, yet still very nice high-rise apartment complexes and office buildings and mass transit systems as the subways. All New York City's population would have 40 square miles set aside for parks and recreation and the remaining 160 square miles or 102,400 acres for livestock and agricultural purposes. No one would go hungry and there would be plenty for all. The scenario need not be carried out for Niger or Mali since they also have plentiful rainfall and the populace for the most part lives in these areas. Notice the respective charts. Here is Mali's rainfall and the populace. Here is Niger's rainfall. and the populace. The difference between Uganda and both Niger and Mali is that Niger and Mali have only 13 plus million people living in over three times the land mass. New York City with the comparative ratios of Niger and Mali would have a population just under 6,000. Now let's carry the scenario to the extreme. Let's trade countries all together, keeping the American government in both countries to avoid tribal fractions that exist in Africa and which have been much of the issue. Africa's total population is 840 million. United States total population is 465 million. Africa's total land is 11.7 million square miles, while the United States has 3.79 million square miles. In comparison, the United States population is 55% of Africa's, while Africa has 2.7 times the amount of square miles than the United States. Both parties would benefit from this trade. The United States would benefit from increased property. We would have an increase in agricultural land, in pasture land, and more importantly in coastal line, where we would benefit in tidal energy and wind currents, which could produce enough electricity not only for the continent of Africa, but could be exported to other countries as well. We would no longer rely upon foreign oil that could be totally electric. British Petroleum, who has irresponsibly polluted our oceans and our environment, could recompense our world by drilling for much-needed life-saving water in arid lands, not only in Africa, but elsewhere in the world. Synthetics outlast fossil lubricants 10 to 20 times longer without burning, in spite of National Geographic's large oil advertisement entitled A World Without Oil, which was more apocalyptic than anything else. It was the biggest farce I've ever watched. Someone needs to remind National Geographic scriptwriters that latex gloves used in hospitals are not derived from oil. What a scam. The world would be better off without oil. Now off my soapbox. Africa as well would benefit from the trade by having up-to-date hospitals, medicine, schools, homes, clean water and food. A look at the map one more time in fast motion starting with the high birth rate countries to the lowest. We have already covered the three in the dark green. Light green indicates birth rates between 6.6 .6 and 4.4. Blue indicates birth rates between 4.2 and 2.6. Red indicates birth rates between 2.5 and 2.1, which is the zero growth zone, where countries stay static in growth rate. Orange is worse, indicating birth rates between 2.0 and 0.9. That is negative growth rate. These countries are losing ground. Within 50 to 100 years, some of these countries, unless migration from other countries exists, there will be no one left to till the soil. 
by the year 2015, the worldwide average of 2.2 or stagnation, zero growth rate, natural disasters and wars are no respecter of wealth or location or nation. They will strike the wealthy, the poor. What is important is that we as a human race help each other when these events occur.